Hey guys, here's some quick tips for Blender. Um, so this is just going to be, you know, some uh, user interface stuff and how you can customize it. So um, it's possible, uh, this is a model and a model in my last tutorial. Um, if you want additional views, you can just drag them out from the top corner here and it'll drag on the view, you see? And then you can choose to um, hide that tool shelf. So you can drag out multiple views and you could have each one of these could be a different um, viewport, you know, so you could have um, the front, the right, and, and, and a 3D one. Um, so once you've got these out, how to get rid of them? Right? It's not very intuitive. You don't just drag it back like this. But you have to go up to the corner here, and you drag it, and when the other one turns gray, it'll remove the one to the right of it. So I'll show you that again. So there we have the right, and let's view the front. Okay, so if we drag the front over the right, there. So it removes the one to the right that you're dragging over. And the same here, if we drag over like that, you'll see you get this arrow here, and that'll remove that one. So that's how you can drag out these new views and, and um, close them again. Now, you can also as well drag up from the bottom here, and you can, um, you know, if you have an animation timeline, you can also have your view something like this. You could have multiple views across the top. You can view your animation timeline at the bottom. So it's actually a very customizable user interface. It's very useful also because if you have different size screens, you know, if you're working on a big screen, then you can really customize the user interface to really fit your screen and your own style of working. Um, so that's, uh, that's a pretty useful tip there. Um, changing between modes here, You've got uh, object mode, sculpting mode, vertex paint mode, edit mode. So like if I switch to edit mode, it'll actually go back to the cube, which I started with after I had uh, sculpted it. So I started with that cube and then after sculpting it, I ended up with this, believe it or not. Um, so that is how you change between different modes here in Blender. Now if we come over to our... Um, preferences for Blender, which is here, user preferences. You can change a lot of stuff, um, the themes here. So these are some preset themes and it will change the colors of Blender depending on which theme you choose. So, you know, you might prefer working in this darker color. It makes your gray models stand out a lot more. So this is the Elysium theme. So there's some predefined themes, but you can also customize them yourself. That would be a little bit tedious because there are a lot of different buttons and functions that can be all different types of colors. But if you really want to, you can customize it yourself, or you can just pretty much go with any of their pre-made um, themes. So this one's particularly dark. I'm not a big fan of that one myself, but I do quite like the Elysium one. Um, other things that we can do... Uh, you can change here what um, is displayed. So if you want to display tooltips or not. So if we uncheck tooltips, when I hover over something, I don't get any any tips anymore. But if you were to turn tooltips on, um, then you'll get some tips as to what different features are for when you select them. Um, or you do something, you will get sometimes these tooltips. Yeah, there's a tooltip there. Um, so that's how you can customize your user interface. You can turn on off the tooltips. You can turn on off Python tooltips. Um, you can get using Python scripting. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that we can do. You can change your default lights, all these uh, settings can all be changed in your user preferences. So Blender is a very extensive program. There's an awful lot to it. And it's very powerful and it will do a lot of stuff as well. Um, can really take a long time to, 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 to learn all of the features and I'm constantly learning something new all of the time. Um, so please go over to my blog. You can keep up to date there with any of uh, the new tutorials that I've done. You can also check out my tutorial on creating this Gollum-esque type um, head. And in future tutorials, 
we're going to be looking at texturing this head and, and developing it further. And I also have tutorials there on Motion 5 and Final Cut Pro and how we can composite 3D objects into live video for those Hollywood special effect type looks. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.